So, Yidra versus Ida. Holy war topic, isn't it? I've been using Ida straight for four or five years now, and from time to time I look at Ghidra, just to see what new features has to offer. Also, last year I was leading our team efforts on writing an elaborate Ghidra plugin. Link to the plugin will be in the description. So I think I'm ready to share my five cents on the matter. Just remember, this is just my opinion based on how I use those two tools, and your experience may vary. Please let me know your thoughts in the comments. Let's start with the price. Ghidra is free for everyone except US citizens, because Ghidra is funded by US taxpayers' money, and for this astonishing price of $0 per month, it offers a great value, like free disassembly, free decompiler for every CPU imaginable, and it's always a great value when you get something for free, right? Just so you know, IDA also has a free version, but it's not that simple, because this free version only supports Intel x86 and x64 CPUs, and free decompiler only supports x64 CPUs, so no luck for those who want to reverse engineer some old enterprise software, and it provides no Python or even C++ API for that matter. Then it's either free, which is subscription-based, which is not really so great, is $365 per month, and for that amount of money it offers disassembler and decompiler for Intel architectures, ARM and PowerPC, but not all of them at the same time. It will be too simple for his race, isn't it? For $365 per month, you can only get either Intel, ARM or PowerPC. And for these architectures, you only get x64 cloud-based decompiler. So again, no x86 decompiler for you guys. And if you only want to reverse engineer x64 architectures, you only get Python API support and GDB server on top of what IDA Free provides already. And then goes IDA Pro that costs around $2,000 and that's only for a little assembler. For each of the decompilers you have to pay around $3,000 more. And remember, for example, if you want to decompile both x86 and x64 Intel architectures, you have to get two decompilers, which doubles the price. Of course, there are bulk discounts, which take place when you, for example, buy several decompilers at once, but nevertheless, IDA Pro is at that price point that hardly any individual can afford. Let's talk about supported CPU architectures. What I like the most about Ghidra is that it supports dozens and dozens of different CPU architectures. And not only for this assembler. If someone, or even you, develops a CPU module for Ghidra, then, on top of disassembler capabilities, you get decompiler for free. And that's great news for embedded enthusiasts like myself, who like poking around different exotic CPU architectures like Motorola, Hitachi, NIAS, and so on. Of course, you can implement your own CPU module for IDA too, but first of all, you have to write it in Python, which means you're writing code. And for Gitra, you write CPU modules in their own language. And in this language you are not writing code, you just describe CPU instructions. So you are not telling this assembler what to do, you just sort of create a CPU specification for assembler, which is far better than writing Python code in my opinion. Learning Ghidra CPU module language is not walking the park either, but for that you get more clear code structure, it's much easier to look how other people implement this or that feature in the recipe modules, because while in Python everyone can structure their program differently, these recipe modules have much stricter structure. And I want to emphasize this once more. Once you develop your CPU module, which can take you a couple of days after you learn the language, you are getting a decompiler for the CPU for free. And there are currently no ways in either to implement your own decompiler. Which means, if you want a decompiler for an exotic CPU architecture, Ghidra is your only option. When you get to the quality of this assembler and decompiler, every time I open IDA, I can feel tens of years of experience that went into carefully analyzing every byte of code, developing lots of heuristics that make sure that every test case and every compiler optimization is covered, and as a result, IDA, and especially Hexroy's decompiler, is considered industry standard, 
for many many years. Sadly, this is not the case with Ghidra. Every time I enthusiastically open Ghidra after a new release, I have to recognize that when Ida just works, I have to spend many many hours in Ghidra to get the same pseudocode quality, if that's even possible. But Ghidra has one killer feature Ida doesn't, and that's of course collaboration. The time when lone enthusiasts could make great things sadly is going away. Software projects are getting bigger and bigger, which means you have to get a bigger and bigger team for security research. So right now I think it's safe to say that nobody works alone on big projects, and Gitter users can collaborate over a network on one project. Which means that not only big teams, but even enthusiasts that, for example, reverse engineer some old video games, get to share their results with each other. Ida sadly has stuck in the 90s in that case, it offers non-collaboration features whatsoever. Of course, there are third-party plugins that enable some sort of collaboration in Ida. Also, this means that you have to rely on the third-party to support this plugin. And, of course, new Ida version can break this plugin, because compatibility is not guaranteed, and you have to either rely on the third-party to fix it, or fix it yourself. Another thing when Ghidra excels, in my opinion, is its API. I like Ghidra SDK far, far better than IDAS. Much easier to set up, you can debug your extensions, unlike in IDA. And of course, Ghidra is open source. Which means that when documentation is lacking, which sadly is the case both for Ghidra and IDA, you can easily take a look at how the things are implemented inside Ghidra. Also, since Ghidra is written in Java and provides Eclipse plugins, it makes navigating the code much, much easier, which is a really, really convenient thing to have if you just start in writing Gitra plugins. Ida has Python and C++ API, but Python API is so bad that people even started to write their own frameworks on top of it to make writing plugins easier. Luckily, Ida's API is becoming better. For instance, the documentation finally became readable over the course of the last year. So, I think there is a hope that the things will continue to improve. After using both Ida and Ghidra, I can see how greatly differ their approaches. Ida relies heavily on their heuristics and covering every edge case possible, while Ghidra implements more generalized approach, which means you're getting more or less the same result for each supported CPU architecture. While Ida works very well on some architectures, while working really poorly on others. And, of course, not everything can implement in this generalized matter, which sadly means that some features will never make its way to Ghidra. To sum up, Ghidra is a great tool in terms of value. For a total of zero dollars, you get disassembler, decompiler, debugger and API. I couldn't even dream about it a couple of years ago. But if you rely heavily on manual static analysis, IDA has the potential to offer you a greater experience. IDA still excels on Intel, ARM, and maybe PowerPC and MIPS, but you can't get a decompiler for exotic CPU architectures in IDA. Provided Ghidra's great API, I won't be surprised if some folks use IDA for manual static analysis and Ghidra for scripting and automation. Also, I think if your job relies heavily on reverse engineering, you'll get your IDA Pro version one way or another. Unless you work at NSA. So, thanks for watching, guys. Remember, it's just my own opinion. Don't hesitate to try things for yourself. And as always, happy hacking, you guys.